a feminist is not just a woman. A man can also be a feminist. I've had men tell me that I hate men. <laughs> Hey guys welcome back to my channel this is once again your host Jenny I have so many new subscribers so for some of you who don't know me I'm a serial entrepreneur I have three different companies um, I relocated back to Cameroon Africa <laughs> in 2020 I'm currently in the US now for heart and business related things so yeah that's basically in a nutshell who I am I'm a businesswoman and a lifestyle I don't want to say lifestyle influencer because I do have, you know, an amazing life, I must say. Anyway, so the topic today is going to be about how did I become a feminist? I know this is one of those really sensitive, touchy subject that many people don't like to talk about. And I'm talking about like women in general, they don't like to associate themselves with the word feminist or feminism. So before you guys jump on here and start, you know, talking about how feminists are such and such type of women, I'm just going to give you a little background. I actually have a computer <laughs> right here because I want to give you the definition by the dictionary. I don't have a physical dictionary, but we have a computer and we can always Google. So, okay. So I pulled up this definition on Merriam Webster. Uh, I mean, if you go MerriamWebster.com. You're going to see that. So basically the definition of feminism is the belief that men and women should have equal rights and opportunity. That's it. Okay. So now when you go to dictionary.com, I'm going to give you different definitions so that you guys have an idea. Dictionary.com. The definition is the doctrine. I mean, feminism is the doctrine advocating social, political, and all other rights of women equal to those of men so anyhow now you get that right so let's get started with the beginning how did i become a feminist so the story is really long because the story has been my entire childhood my entire adulthood because i was born and raised back home in cameroon um and i relocated back in the u.s at age 20. so many people who knew me knew that i had those feminist type of characteristic but the thing is that when you're a child and you're a young girl right people call you stubborn they call you um you are too vocal you talk too much you are too assertive too controlling um you are too bossy i think those are some of the terminology that i heard when i was a younger i mean a younger girl like in my teenage years and so forth actually before my teenage years because i have many stories guys so i want to say um i did move to the u.s and of course you get influenced by different environment different culture and i got to the u.s and then i realized that women compared to cameroon women have more of a voice like women can say something and people are going to be listening which wasn't the case when i was growing up but at the time that i was growing up um, i really didn't see many I don't want to say strong women because I believe that my mom, my grandmas, I mean, my aunties are really strong women, um, but I did not see career focused women a lot. I have many people, um, men, mostly men, that when they talk to me, they always say that I've become a feminist, maybe because I moved to the US, uh, that the ways of Americans is not the ways of Cameroon. And that was one of the main concerns that many of my guy friends, because I have many guy friends and few girlfriends, many of my guy friends actually told me that me deciding to relocate back to Cameroon at this age in my life is going to be harder because I'm too much of a feminist. If I start from the beginning, let me just give you a little bitty background of the kind of structure of my family, right? Mom and dad, they're still alive they're still unmarried um and they had this beautiful relationship that i always always admire but about the age when i was like 11 i think 10 to 11 years old i started asking many questions because i didn't understand why my parents were married and my my grandma on my mom's side so my mom's mom wasn't with you know somebody and then i found out that at a younger age she got married really young and then she decided to divorce because um she was in an abusive relationship and she didn't want her children to see her that way so she left the marriage and then she became really a self-made woman like she just went she was selling i think um 
uh, I don't want to um, yams yams at the market um, Yoka which is a cassava she was selling anything like food in the marketplace and that was her way of like getting outside in the world where she's been taught and raised to become somebody's wife and she just was like no this is not what I foresee for my life and I want my kids to have a better life so she left her marriage and keep in mind that I'm talking about my late grandma that was like oh I don't even know like back in the 19 something early, early <laughs> like my grandma age when she passed away I think she was about 86 86 but we didn't even know exactly her age because at the time there were no really real birth certificate and so forth but so that was my first encounter with her huh, I can actually make my own decision so I think early in my teenage years I started asking questions because I would see men going to work doing things that they wanted to do, um, traveling all over, and the women will always stay home. And I remember a conversation, I was about maybe 13, 12 to 13 years old, and I remember a conversation I had with my mom, because I was like, I don't understand why these boys are just like, I like you because you're cute. Like, I just don't want to be cute. I want to be smart too. <laughs> this is the little me talking, right? And my mom told me, she's like, yeah, you know, you have a kind of strong personality. Just make sure that before you finish your education, which means like, high school university before you finish school make sure you get yourself a husband because my mom knew that I wanted to become a career woman so she basically said if you become successful too early before you get married men are gonna be intimidated by you and I remember this is this is it me 13 year old just keep that in mind I remember talking to my mom and saying why is it that I have to be defined or my entire upbringing has to be about a man so I think when I was younger, my mom was so annoyed, guys. <laughs> she was so annoyed because I would ask her a question like, huh, how come dad goes to work every day? You know, he's wearing a suit and you don't wear a suit to go out. Because my mom was a stay-at-home wife, but occasionally she would do her own little businesses. Like she would go abroad, buy merchandise, come to Cameroon and sell it to like friends and people and things like that. So she was doing her own business um, things. At some point she also had a restaurant. So my mom wasn't just somebody who was 100% a stay home wife, um, but mainly I think the picture that I have in my mind when I was growing up is that my mom was most of the time staying home at home. So I questioned that because I was like, why? You know, the conversation that my dad had with his, you know, friends or people coming at home was so different than the conversation that my mom was having. And I remember being like, okay, I want to have the conversation that my dad is having. Like I knew for a long time that I wanted to be recognized as smart. But one thing that I noticed when I was younger is that everything was about me being cute. <laughs> like, oh, you're too cute, you know? And people will always you know, praise me because I will cook something that is good or maybe they will see me cleaning the house, maybe they will see me taking care of my little siblings and that was me being a woman, that's what society expected me to be and for a long time I tried to fight it because I was like, huh, maybe I'm not supposed to be the smart one, maybe I'm not supposed to be the business woman but my feminism really started shaping up and I say my feminism because at the time, what do you know about feminism and feminism and this and that? And if you guys go through the history of when the feminist movement started, it wasn't really including women of color, really. It wasn't including women of color. So there are different, you will encounter different people. Um, one thing that I also want to mention before I go into that world, um, a feminist is not just a woman. A man can also be a feminist, right? As long as he's somebody who's advocating for women's rights, um, for equality, for equal opportunities, then he's also a feminist. It's not just limited to, feminist is not just for women, basically. So anyway, let's go back to my story. So, um, so my feminism, if you want to call it like that, started really shaping up when I saw the injustices that were happening with my, I don't want to with my aunt, with uh, a specific aunt, I have many aunts, but there was one of my aunts that she got married, she was really young, I mean she was in her 20s when she got married, I used to go on vacation to her place, and almost every day, we get, my sister and I, when we be on vacation, my sister and I, the husband, um, her late husband, would actually lock us in the bedroom, just so he can beat her up, and at the time I didn't understand, because I was like, 
Is that how marriage is? But I looked at my own parents and I didn't see that type of dynamic. So I knew it wasn't like that for everyone. But I was wondering why it was so accepted. And even when she would go and complain to other people, it was more like just hanging there, you know, it's marriage, um, just compromise. Marriage means compromise. And there's this entire thing about how we look at marriage, right? We look at it in terms of ownership, meaning the men own the women. Um, instead of looking at it in terms of partnership. So I never really quite understood that in the, and I want to say in the African or Cameroonian structure because that's where I grew up. I started understanding of really shaping up my brain in understanding that women and men went, were not equal. Um, I mean, I don't even believe in that thing that they say equality per se, because until a man can get pregnant, and feed the baby with his boobs. I don't believe men and women can ever be equal. I just think we are two different people, but in terms of societal opportunities and things like that, I do believe that we should have equal opportunities and so forth. Um, so now let me go back to the story of my aunt. So it was my aunt that really made me understand that this patriarchal society is, is really shaped in such a way that women can die in, in the house and nobody will ever blame the men. Um, just, one year ago, I mean, I'm not talking when I was too young. One year ago, um, there was this thing that happened where um, a Cameroonian couple from, I think they were in the US, they got into a fight or something. I'm, I'm not sure exactly the details. All I know is that the husband killed his wife. And I remember it was going viral on social media and I was sitting down with my parents and everything and I made a comment, oh my God, another woman got killed by her husband, another Cameroonian woman. And the first thing that my dad said, right, was, ah, oh, what did she do? And that thing, <laughs> guys, just give me a moment. <laughs> so, that comment alone, I was there with my sister. So my sister is, you would also call her feminist because I think we see things the same way. So my sister and I just, I, I think it was me first because I think she, was, she wasn't paying attention. I turned around, looked at my dad, and I said, what? You just found out a woman got killed by her husband, got murdered by her husband. And the first thing you ask is, what did she do? I never got over it. And every time I think about it, I'm like, okay, I know my dad is old school. I know this and that. But I think so basically after having a conversation with my dad, I basically told him that um, this question should never be part of the conversation because at the end of the day, you now reversing the blame to the victim. You know, the victim should not be what what did she do? Or even though it was, even though the roles were were really reversed, where it's the woman who killed her husband, I don't believe that people should be like, what did he do? Right? Because at the end of the day, one person is a criminal, <laughs> the other person is a victim. So anyway, I had a conversation with my dad, and this was not the first conversation that I've ever had with my dad. This is one of those i don't know hundreds conversation that we had and i think um the responsibility that my generation and the younger generation has is really to also be part of educating the parents because there are so many conversations that i've been part of with uncles with aunties with my parents my parents actually are really good i mean they're good listeners whether they will you know, take your advice or not, but they're good listeners. Um, so we have conversations when it comes to like my role as a woman who wants to be a boss, who wants to be a CEO, who wants to travel the world, and who is not that keen on like getting married and things like that. Of course, if it happens, we'll be amazing. If it happens with a good partner, but some of us women are also drawn to like building empires, right? It's not just about um, how many children do you have and so forth. So. I where exactly did my feminism start? I think I was always, I think I was born like that. Like, I'm, I hate to say it because many people are like, oh, you are not born feminist, you know, the society. I get that, guys. And I think my environment, I would never um, forget the environment that I grew up in. I think my environment shaped me from an early age um, into becoming in court a feminist right so and i know many people would be like oh no she's just talking because you know um her american way she's too americanized or blah blah and i've gone back home for example and I've, I've already told you guys this type of the type of things that i will experience back home where um i'm dealing i'm really working on a contract with some builders because you guys know 
have a school, so forth. I remember dealing with some contracts with the, the builders and I was telling them exactly what I want, blah, 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 blah. And the build, one of the builders knew my dad because my dad is a civil engineer. So he knew my dad and he basically said, oh, you know, that's why I like working with older people, with older men, you know, that if he was your dad. I didn't even listen. I didn't even listen to the rest of his comment. <laughs> as soon as he said, if it was your dad, keep in mind that he had already started working, right? I'm the one paying him. And I remember that day I told him, I said, oh, so if it was my dad, things would have been better. So go ahead and ask my dad to pay you then. Like it was just this ridiculous thing where you having a woman tell you exactly what she wants. You having a woman run the school, you having a woman finance, you know, um, your labor and everything. And you still want to be talking to a man. So those things, you know, and I, it wasn't something that it was so, oh my God, what is happening? Because I expected that, you know, this is not the first time it had happened. This is not the second time it had happened and so forth. Um, I remember going some other place I was talking and I feel like it's always construction. <laughs> talking to the painter. I have this really good painter. So early on when we started working together, um, and always, you know, like negotiating the deals, how much it was going to cost me for a renovation project that my consulting firm actually rendered uh, for one of our clients. So I remember he, when we got to the, I mean, to the deal, to the negotiation price that I wanted, um, he was like, you know what, let's just do it. Damn, you're really tough in business. Like, I can just imagine how tough you are with your husband. I'm like, well, excuse me? <laughs> And then he's like, yeah, you know, cause I'm sure that's how you have, cause okay, his whole thing was like, I'm doing this project, right? Meaning that my husband is financing or the consult, my YGL consulting firm is my husband company. Keep in mind that YGL are just my initials, right? This is my first, middle, last name. My initials, just, and he didn't know that by the way, but it was just those little comments that you often hear i want to take a brief moment just to announce the giveaway winners so congratulations to you both you are the giveaway winners so feel free to send me an email and you will receive your prize for the rest of you who participated thank you so much for participating and don't worry there's going to be other opportunities hate men. guys i've had men tell me that i hate men <laughs> just because i don't want to i don't want to follow the rules which is like the man is supposed to be here the woman is supposed to be there right um being in relationships where somebody asks you to basically quit what you're doing quit your businesses just to become a housewife i've encountered that um being in a relationship where you work um with your partner in his company and then when you decide to stop working for him or with him, you know, it becomes this whole thing like, I just wanted a housewife. Um, keep in mind that you still have your businesses to run, right? And the person switch and becomes like, you know what, you're a businesswoman, you've always aspired to this type of life, but you know what, I wanted my wife to be ABCG. And for those type of relationships, I've called them off. Like, I'm not gonna be one of those women who's gonna be like, I would rather you call me, a man hater than be in a relationship that is not true to myself and i think this is a conversation that when women talk that way you will see there are men that have that are evolved right as women are evolving you know the difference i've had men who will sometimes say oh my mom used to do abcd for my dad so i'm expecting my wife to also do abcd which is ridiculous right because that was 1980 something we in 2000 something okay technology has evolved <laughs> like you don't go to work um and writing down everything on paper when you have a computer for example um you don't have to go knock on somebody's door when you can just call them right so as technology is evolving medicine is evolving everything is evolving um and human beings also are evolving we used to live in huts right in the forest somewhere and now we are living in those beautiful houses and so forth and um, we are flying planes so i don't understand sometimes when it comes to those type of conversation um then people will give you the stigma of being an angry woman an angry feminist and which is funny to me right because any man or any person that would just have that type of comments negative comments right is some is somebody that i would not even want to entertain in the first place so anyway the conversation is really long but let me just continue sipping my wine before we continue
whenever a woman is talking about her achievements or she's talking about things that she wants to do um like she's going to be categorized as a feminist and therefore it's not going to be a sexy um a sexy characteristic that she should have right and i feel like the success of women should not be a threat to men that's where the education comes in right um even though sometimes my generation we sometimes blame our parents generation and the parents of our parents and talking about how they raise girls to aspire for marriage right only for marriage and they did not raise boys to aspire for marriage and i think that's what's happening in our society today where if you're a woman who is saying this is what i'm expecting this is my right this is what i want to do um you have a lot of backlash right then men are going to be like you hate men i've been in a relationship where you are not respected where your dreams are not valued where um your desire to to become a, a powerful woman is looked down upon it's not really the type of relationship i would want to be in in the first place and just for that sake people will call you you hate men you don't like men you feminist and so forth right the conversation can be super duper long if we just sit down and talk about the whole how can your feminism impact your relationships that's a long conversation to have okay so i just wanted to close this topic because it's something that it's a conversation that i've had over and over and over again and i wanted to also be able to answer the question why i became a feminist and why i am happy and proud to say i'm a feminist i know many people define feminism differently um a white woman who lived i don't know somewhere in the u.s and she had you know a rich lavish life is going to define her feminism differently right um so i think when you talk specifically to women like if you encounter a woman that has something or maybe she's claiming to be a feminist really make sure that you ask her why are you a feminist and look at me today right in a position where i have degrees i have jobs i have my companies this is really the feminist movement that allowed women to have an education to go beyond just becoming housewives and stuff like that and there's nothing 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 wrong with women who decide to be housewives that just like they're not there's nothing wrong with women who decide my goal in life and my purpose is to bear children right my mom was for the most part of of her marital life i mean up to now she's been a housewife and i watched her being really happy being a housewife and there's nothing wrong with that but just like when you look at other women also who wants to be ceos right there should be nothing wrong with that as well so anyway i hope this conversation was really helpful i feel like when it comes to talking about such topic i could go on and on and on but the purpose was just to answer the question why am i a feminist and i kind of gave you a background of the things that really shape my whole um my whole paradigm when it comes to who am i as a woman and i had to define it for myself and i believe that every woman has the right and the opportunity to say you know what this is who i want to be i know depending on the country where you are the culture um, that you in the traditions some women don't have the choice right because they are in a society where they're supposed to do a b c d and they don't even have a voice so for those who have a choice i'm just on here to say be the woman that you want to be and be bold and make a mark on this earth so that other young girls can also get inspired from you anywho this is the end of the conversation i got to eat so thank you guys for watching as usual give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll talk to you guys later Bye.